Greetings, fellow modelers, and welcome to the next exciting edition of Model Crafter. This is volume six, and in this volume, we're going to build and paint a new kit by a company called Nude Resin. This is an exciting kit. What really attracted me to this kit was the engineering of the kit. Phenomenal. I mean, the part breakdown is really something. There was virtually no putty work to do. Uh, it made assembly easy and painting easy. So I think that's what you're really going to enjoy about this kit. So without further ado, let's get started on Hocus Pocus. Well, let's take a look at the parts here. And uh, here's the head. And uh, again, the, part, the, uh, the entire kit was so well engineered it wasn't even funny. Um, here's the head and uh, t the two holes at the top where the hair pieces will go. And um, here's one of the feet or boots. And uh, as you can see, there's tabs, or holes and tabs where all the parts would line up. Here the upper body and the lower body have both been joined together. Um, again, this was a very clean casting. Very clean. Uh, I had to do minimal cleanup on this entire thing. I did have to remove some seams on the legs, but again, uh, it was a very clean casting. Not a lot of problems with this kit whatsoever. Everything just keys together. Here's an arm, and you can see one of the tabs, and of course that's where this portion of the arm will join into the, uh, the, the upper portion of the arm. This allows for really clean painting. Uh, the, the way this kit was engineered, it was basically engineered almost like an anime kit and uh, here you can see that uh, you know the legs the the feet and the legs fit together very well and this allows for a very clean edge when it comes to painting especially the uh, the top strap uh, at the top of that boot where it will join the leg so um, again you know the engineering plays a major role in uh, you know when it comes to painting the kit okay uh, all the parts have been primed and I'm getting ready here I'm gonna start with the base and uh, I just use a, a Krylon gray primer and uh, all the parts have been painted and allowed to dry for about 24 to 48 hours here's the top of the cauldron and again the cauldron itself was so well engineered uh, you could even drill a hole through there and uh, you could even put uh, an LED through so that the uh, it'll come through the uh, the uh, face for the jack-o'-lantern if you if you wish um, but that's entirely up to uh, you know each builder now here I'm starting with a, a dark chocolate brown uh, you can mix any sort of brown you want uh, I know everyone uses different colors different different brands of paint here this is basically just a very dark brown and I'm going to use this as the base coat uh, on the base uh, it's supposed to be wood planking so uh, I'm starting with a very a very dark brown because I'm, I'm going for a very old rustic look uh, not not a kind of a new look so um, and uh, I'm just br you know brushing this on by hand as you can see uh, you know if you want you could use an airbrush which obviously would make very short work of uh, a task like this or you can just uh, enjoy you know just sit there you know uh, at a nice uh, you know, leisurely pace and uh, using a very wide brush you can just uh, you know paint it by hand if you, if you so desire you just want to make sure that you get nice even coverage apply the paint uh, you know thoroughly across the entire surface and uh, this kit was really a lot of fun I really enjoyed painting this kit uh, and again, uh, I know I keep harping on it, but uh, I really feel that the engineering of the kit uh, really played a major role in deciding to even do the kit. Um, you know, many times uh, kit producers will go ahead and mold heads and arms and you know everything else to the to the body. And uh, that what really caught my eye when I first saw pictures of this kit. Uh, was the you know the fact that it was so well engineered and, and broken down
And of course, uh, you know, once uh, the paint's been applied, you can then come back with a blow dryer and just sort of speed dry the paint, uh, which obviously makes waiting easy. And I know I've, I've covered that uh, in other videos as well, but it really does help speed up the process and allows you to just keep right on painting. Okay, now, uh, and this is something else I've also mentioned before, uh, the texture and uh, dry brushing because dry brushing really emphasizes that texture and this thing is loaded with texture so here I'm mixing up uh, a lighter shade of the brown color using a little bit of brown a little bit of white and a little bit of orange because I don't want a real pale pasty sort of look and uh, you know again you know sculptors spend a great deal of time in uh, applying all of this texture. So you really want to emphasize it. I did add a little bit more brown uh, because I, I, again, I didn't want it to look too orangish. Basically, you're just going after a much lighter shade of the base color. Sometimes uh, you can get away with a completely different color. And again, you know, dry brushing is merely uh, applying enough paint to the ends of the bristles and then you're just going to use a scrubbing motion and you're going to go perpendicular to the way the texture runs and so here I'm, I'm going against the horizontal lines of the wood grain and uh, basically you're just scrubbing against the surface and this way the paint merely adheres to the upper surfaces you know the raised areas and it, it won't go into the lower recessed areas and it doesn't matter on something like this if you get it uneven because you know flooring doesn't wear evenly uh, it all depends on the traffic pattern so for a more realistic look you can you know uh, have certain areas lighter certain areas darker you know going for that little bit of a mottled type of pattern uh, sometimes just adds a, a real touch of realism to it and here's the base uh, with all the dry brushing on the wood grain and you can see it's not completely even in, in areas but again you know you don't really need it to be evenly done and I came back with some black and I painted the the edge of the base with the black I also came back with the airbrush and just sort of misted over the edges just to sort of blend that wood grain to the black now here I'm painting the jack-o'-lantern a very dark brownish orange color. This is the base color for the jack-o'-lantern. And uh, you know, again, many people just base coat in certain colors, and it really uh, you, you really can't see all the detail that's that's in the kit. Uh, and here it is base coated, and you can you can see the lines, you can see the you know you can see all the ridges in the in the jack-o'-lantern, but here it is dry brushed with a lighter shade of orange and you can really see the difference you can really see how the all the detail just stands out so much better once you dry brush pieces like this now here I'm applying a, a base coat of black to the uh, the bottom section of the cauldron I wanted a nice even finish so I decided to use the airbrush and here I'm painting the uh, the top edge I think it was really smart leaving the top off the cauldron because again you could drill a hole through that run an LED and just put a simple battery and a switch inside of the cauldron so that way you could light up the uh, the jack-o'-lantern now here I've painted the liquid in the cauldron a very pale yellowish green sort of color and I just went with a very even color I didn't try to uh, add any color differences to create depth uh, and of course you know this is where the jack-o'-lantern will sit you know once uh, once that color has been applied and the jack-o'-lantern has been completely painted and uh, when I glued the jack-o'-lantern on I came back with that pale liquid color and I brushed it onto the bottom section of the jack-o'-lantern to add a little bit of splash as though when the jack-o'-lantern was dropped in uh, it was uh, some of it splashed onto it and um, now for the gloss for the uh, for the uh, liquid in the cauldron I decided to use five minute epoxy 
Now you can use any gloss you, you know you wish to use. You could use uh, Future. You could use uh, Tester's gloss. Um, I find, however, that uh, Five Minute Epoxy really adds a high sheen. Uh, it it has a, a a very very wet look. So you want to make sure though that when you're using the brush, it's a brush that you're going to throw away because once that stuff dries, you're never going to get it off there. And uh, depending on the working time of the epoxy, uh, you know you have to work rather quickly. I also applied a slight uh, sheen over the jack-o'-lantern using a thinned down mixture of future and water just so that it would look as though the steam rising from the liquid was condensing onto the skin of the jack-o'-lantern. Okay, now uh, here I'm working with the, the upper and lower body and of course all the parts have been primed. Uh, I did have to go back and do a little bit of uh, fine sanding on some areas just to eliminate uh, a few uh, minor imperfections uh, in the surface. Uh, of course the primer will show you areas of a kit where you need further uh, cleanup and um, here I'm just test fitting the hair parts to the head. Again I know I keep mentioning this but but uh, you know the engineering of the kit was just phenomenal uh, allowing you to paint uh, you know much finer details having these parts separate, it really helps, especially when you're a beginner. Now here I'm airbrushing a flesh tone. This is a base flesh tone uh, on, on all the flesh areas of the model. And of course I know everyone uh, also likes to use their own mix. Everyone has their preference when it comes to flesh tones. Some like them a little on the pinkish side. Some people like them a little bit on the orangish side. Um, you know, I always try to find a happy medium. Uh, I don't like them too pink, and I really don't like them too orange. And I'm just using a base color here. Well, it, it, it was a special mix, but uh, again, everyone has their preference. And, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's obviously best when you're working with a smooth-skinned subject, it's really best to apply it with an airbrush. And whenever you're spraying paint, you always want to make sure you work with plenty of ventilation uh, if your work area has a window, please, by all means, open it. Run a fan, uh, you know, as an exhaust fan. Um, if you don't have a lot of ventilation in your work area, take breaks and go outside and get some fresh air. Do not keep breathing all these paint fumes. Now here, all the parts have been base coated with the flesh color. A uh, nice even coat. And... Um, the next phase uh, will be to use the, uh, the shadow color and uh, you may decide you want to use an airbrush or you may even decide you want to use pastel chalks. Uh, if you want more information on uh, either technique, please see my other videos, Figure Model Airbrushing and Figure Model Basics 2.0. But Both videos will give you plenty of information on both airbrushing and using pastels. Here I've elected to use pastel chalks. So uh, I, I gather together the materials necessary for that. And basically what you're gonna do is you're going to use two different brushes and you're going to use what I call the application brush, which is the one you're going to use to apply the pastel powder. And um, you're going to use that to apply the powder and then you're going to come back with what I call the blending brush. And this uh, is simply used to uh, you know, soften the edges, blend the pastel chalks you know, into those recessed areas for a much more organic, softer sort of look. And uh, it's simply a matter of taking your application brush and applying some of the pastel powder and here I'm actually using a slight mix. I'm using brown, a little bit of red. I also add uh, a touch of orange uh, just because I, I don't want it to be too dark. And again, I don't want it to be too red or, or pink. And, um, you know, you're simply going to, you know, take the part and wherever there's a recessed area, you're going to take the application brush and the powder 
and you're simply going to very carefully apply it into those areas. And you don't want to rub it in too hard. You're simply putting it onto the surface and then you're going to come back with your soft blending brush and you're just going to sort of rub it around a little bit in that area. You're going to you know, go over the edges a little bit and kind of soften it here and there. And that's going to give you a very, uh, you know, much uh, a much softer organic look, which is quite similar to, uh, you know, using an airbrush. So again, it's really a matter of preference. If you're not too familiar with airbrushing, you may opt to use the pastel chalks instead. Um, it, it's it's really a matter of preference. Uh, I, I honestly can't say that one looks any better than the other, really. Um, again, it, it just comes down to a matter of experience, and uh, you know, if you're willing to try the airbrush, by all means, you know, you you know, use the airbrush. Uh, I I go back and forth sometimes myself. I don't stick with just one method all the time. And here I also did the legs. I did around the uh, around the knees, and uh, the backs of the legs, uh, under the buttocks. Um, through the uh, the inside of the thighs. Basically, wherever there's a recessed area is where you're going to want to apply that shadowy, uh, darkened flesh tone. I also applied a little bit of a shadow color around the eyes, uh, 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 under the chin, uh, the jawline, and a little bit under the bottom lip just to add enough definition. I didn't apply it very heavily. It actually looks a little heavier here on the video, but it really, uh, you know, once you apply uh, the other colors, you know, here I came back and I painted the, uh, the teeth white. Um, before I painted the red of the lips, uh, I actually gave it a very dark brownish red tone first, which added a little bit more depth. Um, the eye sockets have been painted with a very pale warm gray and uh, again, uh, it's it's rather difficult to, to, to really uh, get the camera in there while I'm painting these details. And it, it there's really no technique or secret. Uh, you, you know, you simply have to use uh, a very fine point brush and work very slowly and carefully. That's really the only trick to it. And again, here's here's the head now that the eyes have been blocked in. The nostrils have been painted and uh, the eyebrows. And sometimes I find that in painting these fine lines, uh, I will have to go back and forth. Uh, sometimes, you know, you paint the eyebrows and if you go uh, over the brow, you have to then come back with the basic flesh tone and clean up the edges. And a lot of times, uh, you know, even around the eyes, when you're painting uh, the eyelashes, you sometimes have to come back and uh, in order to thin the lines out you have to then go behind it with the flesh color and that helps clean up the edges so that you get nice even you know straight uh, thin lines otherwise you'll drive yourself crazy if you think you're going to get it with one shot some people may but uh, uh, I certainly can't <laughs> okay here I painted the choker uh, a black just based it out in black and then I came back with a fine brush and uh, painted the little uh, studs silver as well as the buckle and again it's really just a matter of working very slowly and carefully with a you know with a fine point detail brush now here's the uh, the finished head with the hair pieces glued on the hair has been painted red I made her a red head I did start out originally with purple, and then after doing a little bit more research, I found uh, photos of a model that uh, had her as a redhead, so I thought she actually looked better as a redhead, so I opted to change the color and uh, painted her with, with red hair. And again, the eyes, uh, the eyes have been finished off, uh, the, the eyes... Uh, were painted green, kind of a bright green. Actually, I think it was a two-tone green. I started off with a darker green and added a slightly uh, brighter highlight. And here the upper body uh, clothing is being painted. 
Uh, and again, I'm using a fine point detail brush, and it's kind of hard to tell here, but I actually used purple. Uh, however, I, I probably should have went with a slightly lighter shade of purple. And again, uh, taking my time, I, I painted the laces, um, and there's really no trick to it. It's just a matter of you know, using a fine point detail brush and taking your time. Same thing with the boots and the straps. You know, it's just a matter of taking your time. And again, I had to go back and forth a little bit between the flesh tone and the, uh, the black in order to get clean edges. But you can see here how by these being separate parts from the legs, that top strap was way easier to paint because uh, I, didn't have the, uh, the, I didn't have the top part of the leg to worry about. And um, so this way I could come back and glue those parts on and not have to worry. Now here I'm using Future Floor Wax straight from the bottle and I'm uh, glossing up the eyes and uh, as well as the teeth and uh, the lips. And sometimes it takes several applications. You know, you may, you may start off even with just straight Future and uh, you'll find that you need several applications. If you're not familiar with Future Floor Wax, here's what the bottle looks like. And it's available in grocery stores wherever the cleaning products are sold. Here's the, uh, the finished head. Uh, all the gloss has been added. And as you can see, it's uh, very wet looking, very glossy. I also thinned down uh, some of the future with water. Uh, it's about a 50-50 mix. And I brushed that over the bodice because I was looking for uh, you know, a, a kind of a vinyl or leathery sort of look. So I didn't go with a straight shot of future because that would have been a little too glossy. I wanted a kind of a semi-gloss or a satiny sort of look, and that was what I uh, that was what I got here by thinning down the future. Now here I've got the lower legs or the boots joined to the upper legs, and again I've got very clean edges. Uh, I painted the buckles as well. There's that kit engineering again. Okay, uh, the arms have been painted, uh, the, uh, the uh, arm bands have been painted, and now I've got the base prepped. I've got areas scratched away down to bare resin, and uh, I'm about ready to uh, glue the figure to the base. One of the pins was already broken off when I got the kit. And the other pin I simply had to uh, grind down a little bit because it was up a little high. The hole in the bottom of the foot wasn't that deep. So rather than drill it out, I just simply filed the pin down. And here I've, uh, I've got the arms glued on and the figure is now glued to the base. And the only thing left to do would be to attach the little skull and crossbones to the bottom of the spoon handle. But here we go. Here's the finished model. It was a joy to build and paint. Okay, well, that wraps up this edition of Model Crafter. I hope you really enjoyed building and painting this kit as much as I enjoyed it. So, until next time, this is Phil Lister saying, go build a model.